thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Sudhir. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Navin Bhai, for inviting me. Thank um, you, sir. So what we'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get started on this. Um, so we'll talk about anatomy and vascularity of the scaphoid. Um, <clears throat> now, if you look at the anatomy, um, and this is uh, from our dissections, uh, which are going to be published in the new book, uh, The Grasping Hand. So if you look at the two rows, as um, <clears throat> Sudhir was talking about, you have the scaphoid lunate and the triquetrum on the distal part of the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. You see the mid-carpal joint nicely opened up here. And on the volar side, you have an extra, uh, the sesamoid, the pisiform bone there. Looking at the, um, the wrist from the dorsal side, when you um, retract the tendons, and this is the uh, three, four portal. Uh, this is the third compartment, that's EPL. This is the fourth compartment, that's the EDC. And between the third and the fourth, you have uh, the scaphoid-lunate interval right here. So this is the scaphoid, this is the lunate, and you see the uh, uh, scaphoid-lunate uh, um, ligaments, the dorsal part, the introsseous part, uh, and here you have the uh, radio uh, uh, lunar triquetral or radio triquetral ligament and the dorsal intercarpal ligaments uh, there. Now, if you, this is the scaphoid, this is the lunate here. Now this ligament, the dorsal intercarpal ligament uh, can be of various shapes. And here you have it uh, very thick. It's blended very nicely with the uh, dorsal portion of the uh, scaphoid lunate ligament. Uh, and here you have the dorsal uh, radiocarpal ligament, which goes from the uh, radius um, in a in a different in a variety of fashions, and there are four different types, and uh, we can talk about this. Goes to the uh, triquetrum there. So the triquetrum, all these uh, uh, ligaments are attaching to the triquetrum, and there is a interspace here, and you can take advantage of this interspace by you know when you want to approach in a limited fashion, and uh, Dick Berger has shown this, and you can make little. Uh, windows in the capsule so you don't uh, injure the uh, important ligaments. And similarly, if you want the uh, want to approach the ulnar side, you can make another window here. And again, you see a different uh, um, modality or different uh, structure of these ligaments. Another different structure of the dorsal intercarpal and uh, dorsal radiocarpal ligaments. Um, and again, here uh, in a different uh, perspective, you see the scaphoid here, lunate here, the scaphoid lunate ligament. Um, if you come to the palmer side, once you open the palmer side from the palmer side itself, you don't see much. It's actually a very um, uniform type of a uh, structure. And once you peel this um, layer off, then you can look at the individual ligaments. And then you have on the radial side, starting off, you have the radial collateral ligament. Then you have the radius scaphoid capitate ligament, which goes across uh, the uh, scaphoid uh, waist of the scaphoid onto the capitate. And then you have the long radial lunate ligament and you have the ligament of test two. And then here you have the short radial lunate ligament. And beyond on the ulnar side, you have the ulnocarpal ligament. So you see the various structures which you see in the book. And I'll show you the structures here. So here you have the radial collateral ligament, uh, the radius scaphoid capitate, very thick ligament the long radial lunate ligament and the short radial lunate ligaments here. The relationship to the uh, carpal tunnel, this is all the structures of the carpal tunnel removed. This is the um, flexor retinaculum or the transverse carpal ligament right here. And here approximately is the uh, uh, wrist joint. Here's the edge of the radius and here's the ligaments of the, of the wrist. Now, in, in looking at it again, you see the carpal tunnel here. This is the pisiform. This is the trapezium, and you have the radius here, ulna here, and you have the uh, radius scaphoid cavitate, long radial lunate, and other ligaments here, which are fairly proximal to the carpal tunnel. And if you want to approach the scaphoid, you have to go through this and either divide them or you can make a little Z-plasty like uh, Mark Garcia Elias has, uh, has shown. You can, you can tease out these individual ligaments uh, into different components, uh, and you can identify them uh, in different ways. And again, showing the different uh, in different specimens. Now, if you look at it, you can see that there are spaces in between, and this is called the space of Poirier, uh, through which uh, uh, dislocations can happen. This is a weak spot in the in the structure on the Palmer side. 
These are the attachments on the um, uh, of the radius for capitate, long radial lunate, uh, radius for lunate, and short radial lunate ligament. The radius for lunate ligament or the ligament of test two is essentially not a ligament. It's a vascular channel through which uh, blood vessels go to the lunate or to the uh, proximal pole of the scaphoid. Now, looking at a different perspective, here's the scaphoid, uh, looking at it from the lateral perspective. And here you have from the radius, uh, the radius scaphoid capitate. And you can see this. This is a very thick ligament uh, uh, across the waist on the palmar side of the scaphoid. And you can imagine that if you have a situation where the proximal pole of the scaphoid is trapped, and then you have a hyperextension force, this can break in, this, in the waist area or even with the flexion force. Now, looking at the mid carpal joint, you see the scaphoid here, you see the lunate here, and on this palmar side, you have the radius scaphoid capitate ligament, and on the dorsal side, you have the intercarpal ligament, dorsal intercarpal ligaments, and you can see how they form a nice groove into which the capitate and the hamate will sit. And again, uh, with a slightly oblique view, this is the scaphoid, and here on the uh, palmar side, you have the thick radius scaphoid capitate ligament. We've cut out some of the radial styloid. So you have the thick radius scaphoid capitate ligament on the palmar side and how it uh, spans the waist of the scaphoid and going across into the capitate. Uh, you, all these ligaments you can see much better from the palmar, from, the, uh, from inside the joint. So from inside the joint, you'll see this uh, um, uh, collateral ligament, radius scaphoid capitate ligament, long radial lunate ligament, and this here, the frondy structure, you'll see that's called the radius scaphoid lunate or the ligament of test two. And this is your guide to the central portion of the wrist. It leads your eye to the scaphoid lunate ligament. So here is the scaphoid, here's the lunate, here's the scaphoid lunate ligament, the introsis portion. This is the dorsal portion. If you go further, volarly, you'll see the volar portion. So looking at it a little bit better, you see the uh, wrist here, you have the scaphoid fossa, the lunate fossa, the scaphoid, the lunate, the ligament of test two right here, and the other radiocouple ligaments right here. And you can see this on the on the scope. If you look do a uh, wrist arthroscopy radiocouple, you'll see the radius scaphoid capitate ligament here, uh, and uh, the long radial lunate ligament right next to the radius scaphoid capitate, long radial lunate. And here's the uh, long radial lunate ligament. Uh, or radio, radio lunar triquetral ligament, as it's called. It used to be called before. Now, here's the short radio lunate ligament. You don't really see this. It's covered uh, very nicely uh, from inside the joint. You have to do a fairly good dissection, but it's a thick ligament on the, on the, uh, between, the, um, uh, between the radius and the uh, lunate. Here's the scapho, uh, connection between the lunate and the scaphoid, the scapholunate ligament here. And uh, this is going on to the, now on the dorsal side, uh, on the volus of the dorsal side, we saw the uh, dorsal carp intercarpal ligaments. On the palmar side, you have very thick ligaments, we, which uh, where you, uh, they can be dissected further. You can lift up the long radial lunate ligament. And uh, if you lift up the radial scapho lunate ligament, there is a deeper ligament called the scapho triquitral ligament, which has not received much um, uh, uh, press in the literature. Now, if you look further into the scaphoid and the lunate, you'll see the scapho lunate ligament, the dorsal portion is the important bit, the thick portion, and then you have the introsis part and you have the volar portion. And the scaphoid and the lunate, they move uh, in, a, in a corkscrew fashion. And you can see the movement here, the movement in a corkscrew type of a fashion. Uh, and again, here, looking at it, the ligament of test two leading your eye on to the scaphoid ligament here. Now, if you look at the mid carpal joint here, you see uh, on a standard arthroscopy, you should not be uh, able to see big spaces here if the uh, ligaments are intact and you'll see all these volar ligaments we mentioned. Uh, and as, as far as the movement is concerned, if the uh, distal pole goes into radial deviation, this will flex the scaphoid. It is a, uh, um, a system of movement. It's called in French, it's called the basquille. That means escape movement of the scaphoid. It has to flex. So in radial deviation of the wrist, the scaphoid flexes. In ulnar deviation of the wrist, on the other hand, the proximal row as well as the scaphoid will extend. So if you want a good view of the proximal row, you want to make an ulnarly deviated view. So uh, let's skip through this. Now, in terms of the vascularity, you see that here's the radial artery coming across here. 
going through the snuff box. And as it goes through the snuff box, it gives branches to the scaphoid. Now it gives branches to the scaphoid to the waist and to the distal pole. And you can see this very clearly here, waist and the scape and the distal pole. Uh, and you can see these uh, branches quite nicely. And here's the scaphoid and you'll see the branches going to the distal pole here and the, uh, the carpal large branch going across like this to, at the uh, snuff box. Now you see the carpal large going across like this and here branches to the scaphoid going through into the waist of the scaphoid. Here again, uh, you see the scaphoid right here. This is the styloid of the radius, the uh, radial artery coming across here and giving branches here. And here, nice branch to this distal pole of the, to the waist of the scaphoid and one branch going to the distal pole of the scaphoid. Here again, branches going to the waist of the scaphoid, the distal pole of the scaphoid. Now, if you look at this one, this is from uh, Gelberman's article, radial styloid, scaphoid, similar that we mentioned uh, to the waist and to the distal pole. And he can here to the waist of the scaphoid. Now, this is a beautiful photograph of the scaphoid. This is the radial artery going across. This is a superficial branch of the radial artery. The radial artery gives a branch to the waist of the scaphoid and one to the distal pole. And you can see, you can appreciate the proximal pole doesn't have much of a branch there. In Trosky's vessels, you have uh, more branches to the distal pole, less branches to the proximal pole. Now, if you look at uh, computerized uh, imaging, you'll see the same thing. Lots of branches to the waist, not uh, branches to the distal pole, not many branches to the proximal pole. Approaches, you go volarly mostly. Um, on the volar approach, you go the uh, Roos approach, um, expose the FCR and retract it to one side and then go through the ligaments or you can make a Z-plasty of the ligaments as uh, Mark Garcia Lais has pointed out. Uh, on the dorsal side, you can go with a small incision in the uh, three, four interspace, or you can make it a wider uh, incision, uh, uh, retract the tendons and then go across there. And this is just going a, uh, with a dorsal uh, percutaneous uh, thing. Now, in terms of the anatomy of vascularized, you have the uh, scaphoid fracture here with the proximal pole. And here are the branches, which is described by uh, Sheets and Bishops and Bishop and Berger. Um, this is the radial artery. Here, is the, here are the branches to the radius. This is one, two ICSRA, intercompartmental supraretinacular, between the two compartments and over the retinaculum. This is uh, again, one, two ICSRA, first compartment, second compartment, and this is the one, two ICSRA. And this is this two, three ICSRA. This is the fourth ICSRA. Lots of vessels in this area, and you can take branches, you can take uh, uh, bone graft from these vessels and uh, reflect them forward. This is one, two ICSRA. The first compartment uh, tendons have been removed. And this is the dorsal intercarpal uh, vessels, and these are the branches going on to the distal radius. And here again, you see the uh, two, three ICSRA, and this is the uh, fifth ICSRA, this is the fourth ICSRA, uh, fourth EC, and this is the fifth EC, and these are coming together uh, here to form the, uh, from the anterior process artery. So you can take branch, you can take bone graft from here, and this will uh, give you a long, very nice long pedicle. And this on the volar side, you can have these transverse uh, vessels coming from the radial artery, just distal to the pronator quadratus. And here you see the, the section, you can take, um, bone graft from this area to the scaphoid very easily. So this is pronator quadratus taken out, and this is a, a vessel, uh, you can take bone graft from here. So this, uh, you took one, two ICSRA, taking a bone graft, putting it into the uh, interspace, and you can see the bone graft is bleeding, and put the, uh, put the bone, and put a nice small screw and fix it, and that goes on to heal. So this is uh, another uh, case in which the volar uh, 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 one to ICS area was fixed. And this is a volar um, uh, uh, vessel, the maculant. And again, we've shown this and here you take it and put it in there to fix that. You can take, uh, as I mentioned, take uh, bone from the distal part here and put it in this interspace between the two recent article uh, from Hill Hastings and Jeff Greenberg and uh, Summer Camp. Uh, and this shows uh, nice fixation. So here's the, in, in brief, the summary of uh, vascularity of the scaphoid, as well as the anatomy of the scaphoid. 
I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.